Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Tables are so commonly thought of when one speaks of a database that the terms are practically interchangeable. A table is an organized structure that holds information. It consists of fields of information into which you enter your records. A field is a single column within the table consisting of one category of information. A record is a collection of related data fields that describe a single item contained in a row within the table. Now after creating your data model for the database tables, you will want to create the table structures in Access. At least at this point, Access will make it easy for you to do so. One way to start is by creating the tables in Design View. To create a new database table in Design View, click the Table Design button that appears in the Tables group on the Create tab in the ribbon. When you do this, a new table will display in the tabbed Documents area. In Design View, you will not see the actual data that is stored in your table. You will only see a representation of the structure of your table. You will, however, have much greater control over the structure and properties of the fields within your table than if you begin by creating a table in Datasheet View. Note that this window is divided into two panes. There's the design grid at the top, where you enter your field names and assign them data types, and then there's the property section beneath it. In the design grid at the top of the table design view, note that there's a small box at the extreme left end of each field. This is the row selector button. You can click this small square to select the entire row. You will need to do this frequently in Access, so simply become used to where this object is. Now in Design View, you begin by entering the field names into the Field Name column. The Field Name column is where you type the names for your fields in your new table. Field names must be unique within a table and should be brief yet descriptive. You should also consider not placing spaces within the names of the fields. If you want, you can adopt a convention such as capitalizing the first letter of each word within a field name or perhaps using the underscore character instead of a literal space between words in a field name. Also, the order that the fields are entered within this column becomes the order that they will be displayed from left to right when you're viewing the datasheet view, which is the view that allows you to see the actual data within your table. Next, for each field that you create, you must assign it a data type by using the drop down that appears when you click into the data type column to the right of each field name. Now each field that you create must have a data type assigned to it. This tells Access what kind of data you're going to be storing within that field. The default value is text. In relational databases, the more varied kinds of data that exist in the table, the quicker it will be to index and query those tables, so feel free to change the type if needed. Let's review a listing of the various types of data that you can assign to the fields in your tables. The default is text, and this field contains text or a combination of text, numbers, and other information. Its maximum length is 255 characters. The memo field is simply a longer version of the text field. Its maximum length is 65,535 characters. The number field can contain only numeric data upon which you want to perform calculations, not phone numbers or zip codes, as you don't perform calculations with those numbers. They are most often entered as text fields. The date time field contains a date or time code. This is useful for date time stamps and date time calculations. The currency field is similar to the number data type in its function, but it's formatted as currency. Therefore, it uses a fixed point calculation, which is faster than the floating point calculation used by number fields. The auto number data type assigns a unique numeric ID to all records used in the table. So this is useful as a primary key field. You also have the yes, no data type. That stores logical data types, such as yes, no, true, false, on, off, or a negative 1 and 0. And that's used when only two possible values in a field can exist. You also have the OLE object field type, and that connects a field to another Windows application. 
So you can use OLE object types for additional graphics, calendars, or audiovisual files. The hyperlink data type contains a hyperlink to an address on the World Wide Web. The attachment data type allows you to attach any type of supported file, such as images or spreadsheets, for example. It provides greater attachment flexibility than the OLE object field, and also uses storage space more efficiently than OLE fields do. The lookup type just guides you through setting up a lookup field, which will then contain values from another table or query, or values that you enter by hand. This is useful for combo boxes or list boxes within forms. Also new to Access 2010, you have the calculated field type, which allows you to create a calculated field, which performs a function on other table fields. Now below the design grid is the properties section. Here you can set the properties for the currently selected field within the table. The properties that are shown at the bottom of the design grid are the properties of the field currently selected in the design grid above. Now in this area, the properties of the currently selected field will be displayed on two tabs called general and lookup. Lookup is only used for the lookup data type field. Otherwise, all the other properties will be found on the general field. Now you can edit or set the field's properties here by simply changing the value shown as needed. We will look at some of the properties that you can change for selected fields in later lessons. For now, it's simply good to familiarize yourself with where the field properties are located. Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.